our first him sing song is in the service music section. It's him two three two. Let my prayer rise up. Page two three two. Okay. No, let's see. Okay, I'm gonna find it then.
seven six two. Holy, 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 holy. <clears throat> Jesus, you shall be my song.
What a friend for sinners, but we're singing it to the tune of hymn 631, All Divine, All Loves Excelling.
What time is it? It we is 9.21. We are all done. Have you thanked the Lord? Have you praised God's name? Don't you know that no tomorrow is quite the same? Have you thanked the Lord? Have you knelt in prayer and rejoiced that rain or sunshine or God is there? My dear beloved, good morning and welcome to our virtual worship at Redeemer Lutheran Church. We are glad that you are able to join us this morning because that's exactly what we are doing as we gather to worship, to thank God and to sing of God's praise, to pray and to be grateful of God's presence in our life and in our time. Thank you for joining us this morning. I would like to take this opportunity also to thank everyone who have made it possible for our worship last Sunday. I'm glad to be back to lead worship. I thank our sister Gail for bringing the gospel and the good news. Thank our sister Pat for assisting in, in the liturgy. Thank Tom and Jeff for their uh, gift in putting the technology together and Trevor and Jasmine and Ella for their musical leadership. So thank you all for providing an opportunity so that we can continue to worship and give God thanks and praise for God's many blessings in our life. A few uh, brief announcements, as you can find all of them in your bulletin. Hopefully you'll take some opportunity to do that, but I will ask that you continue to pray for all those who are in need of healing. And if you or your family would need a pastoral visit, give me a call and we can arrange for that. Um, also at this time, I'll continue to, uh, let's continue to be smart and safe as we are still under COVID guidance. So safety comes first, um, washing hands and uh, social distancing and just be careful and try to be safe. Uh, also the reminder of this Redeem a Meal Ministry, we love to deliver a nourishing meal to your doorstep to show how much you mean to us as Redeemers. So if you, are, you know of someone uh, would like to appreciate a meal, please let us know. Um, you can contact our sister Pat Finn and she will be able to provide for that. Again, as always, we want to thank you for your generosity and for your continued offering as you continue to support the ministry at Redeemer Lutheran Church. Um, bring your attention to Smile Amazon. Uh, we did receive some from that. So if you are Amazon, uh, please do uh, sign into that so that some money can come to us uh, toward that rewards. There's an opportunity also for the tree removal donation if you so kindly move. Uh, you can always contribute to that fund. Again, all of these announcements are in your bulletin. I will strongly encourage you to take a moment to read all of them. Again, my dear brothers and sisters, I want to welcome you as we continue to worship our God, our beloved God who promised to be with us always to the very end of time. And so today I want to remind us again as our mission statement, we as a community of faith, we worship the triune God. We are called to love and serve all God's people and creation through word and deed. Let us continue to worship.
Dear beloved, let us turn to God as we confess our sin and ask for God's forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God whose steadfast love is everlasting, whose faithfulness endures from generation to generation. Amen. Trusting the mercy of God, let us confess our sin. Reconciling God, we confess that we do not trust your abundance and we deny your presence in our lives. We place our hope in ourselves and we rely on our own efforts. We fail to believe that you provide enough for all. We abuse your good creation for our own benefits. We fear difference and do not welcome others as you have welcomed us. We sin in thought, word, and deed. By your grace, forgive us. Through your love, renew us. And in your spirit, lead us, so that we may live and serve you in newness of life. Amen. <coughs> Excuse me. O oh, beloved of God, by the radical abundance of divine mercy, we have peace with God through Christ Jesus, through whom we have obtained grace upon grace. Our sins are forgiven. Let us now live in hope, for hope does not disappoint, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit. Amen. <laughs> of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all and also with you.
O oh God, we thank you for your Son, who chose the path of suffering for the sake of the world. Humble us by his example, point us to the path of obedience, and give us strength to follow your commands. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Please. 
A reading from Jeremiah. O oh Lord, you know, remember me and visit me, and bring down retribution from me on my persecutors. In your forbearance, do not take me away. Know that on your account I suffer insult. Your words were found, and I ate them. And your words became to me a joy and the delight of my heart. For I am called by your name, O Lord, God of hosts. I did not sit in the company of merrymakers, nor did I rejoice. Under the weight of your hand, I sat alone, for you had filled me with indignation. Why is my pain unceasing, my wound incurable, refusing to be healed? Truly you are to me like a deceitful brook, like waters that fail. Therefore, thus says the Lord, if you turn back, I will take you back, and you shall stand before me. If you utter what is precious and not what is worthless, you shall serve as my mouth. It is they who will turn to you, not you who will turn to them. And I will make you to this people a fortified wall of bronze. They will fight against you, but they shall not prevail over you. For I am with you to save you and deliver you, says the Lord. I will deliver you out of the hand of the wicked and redeem you from the grasp of the ruthless. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. genuine, hate what is evil, hold fast to what is good, love one another with mutual affection, outdo one another in showing honor. Do not lag in zeal, be ardent in spirit, serve the Lord. Rejoice in hope, be patient in suffering, persevere in prayer, contribute to the needs of the saints, extend hospitality to strangers. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse them. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Weep with those who weep. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be haughty, 
but associate with the lowly. Do not claim to be wiser than you are. Do not repay anyone evil for evil, but take thought for what is noble in the sight of all. If it is possible, so far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all. Beloved, never avenge yourselves, but leave room for the wrath of God. For it is written, vengeance is mine. I will repay, says the Lord. No, if your enemies are hungry, feed them. If they are thirsty, give them something to drink. For by doing this, you will heap burning coals on their heads. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 16th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. From that time on, after Peter confessed that Jesus was the Messiah, Jesus began to show his disciple that he must go to Jerusalem and undergo great suffering at the hands of the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and on the third day be raised. And Peter took him aside and he began to rebuke him, saying, God forbid it, Lord. This must never happen to you. But he turned to Peter and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan. You are a stumbling block to me, for you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. Then Jesus told his disciples, If you want to become my followers, let them deny themselves take up their cross, and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake will find it. For what will it profit them if they gain the whole world but forfeit their life? Or what will they give in return for their life? For the Son of Man is to come with his angels in the glory of his Father. Then he will repay everyone for what he has done. Truly, I tell you, there are some standing here who will not taste death before they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Grace and peace to you from God the Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Mrs. Smart was fumbling in her purse for her offering when a large television remote fell out and clattered into the aisle. The curious usher bent over to retrieve it from her and whisper, do you always carry your TV remote to church? No, she replied, but my husband refused to come with me this morning and I figure this was the most evil thing I could do to him legally. Brothers and sisters in Christ, let us be reminded as disciples of Christ, everything we do and everything we say reflect our relationship with God. We are called to live out our baptism daily, every moment and every opportunity we have. This past week, I had participated in an online workshop that is entitled the Life of Faith Initiative. Now, the Life of Faith Initiative is an initiative that is sponsored by Wartburg Seminary and is supported by the ELCA. The purpose of Life of Faith Initiative is to seek to stir up a culture change that frees us and followers of Christ to make the service by the baptized in the arenas of daily life the central focus of the church's mission. 
This initi initiative is a grassroots movement that call on all expression of the ELCA, that is the churchwide, the synods and congregations, that they all to make the many and varied forms of service to neighbors through family, workplace, school, local community, and a world, a vital part of existence. As the church both gather and send for the life of the world, the objective of this initiative is to equip people to live out their faith in family, workplace, school, local community, and the world to help people discern their callings in the world and to support them in following those callings, to prepare ministers of the word as more effective teachers to the interface of faith and life, to intensify the church's focus and mission as service to neighbors in the world through the everyday roles and the relationship of our members. Now, that's a lot, but to put it all in a layman's term, it's simply, my dear brothers and sisters, it is simply to enable and equip us as disciples of Christ to live out our baptism vows, to live among God's faithful people, to hear the word of God and share in the Lord's Supper, to proclaim the good news of God in Christ Jesus through word and deed, to serve all God's people following the example of Jesus, and to strive for justice and peace in all the world. On a daily basis, wherever we are. You see, for too long, many feel that worshiping on Sunday is all to it to be a disciple of Christ. You worship on Sunday, then you wait until the next Sunday roll around, and then you worship again, then you wait until the next Sunday roll around, and you worship again. And some feel that whatever you do during the rest of the week, from Monday through Saturday, really does not matter. As David Lowe suggested, and I quote, indeed, what the 21st century church faces, quite honestly, is to overcome the disconnect most Christians experience what we do on Sunday and what we do the rest of the week. That is, very few of our people find something in what we say in the sermon, what we do during worship, and what we hear in scripture that actually helps them make their sense of their lives in the world. As David went on to say, they are faithful people, don't get me wrong, but most of the folks who listen to our sermons week in and week out haven't been taught or trained to see their labor as holy to see their everyday effort as important to God, to imagine that they are God's partner in doing God's work in the world. And quite frankly, we church leader must take a fair amount of responsibility for this. We really intentionally nurture the imagination of our people, David said, to believe that God is at work in them and through them for the sake of the world God loves so much. And so if this is the case, as David argues, if our people can't figure out how what they do matters, at least in terms of faith or worse, if they can't figure out how their faith make a difference to all the other stuff they do, then we have to wonder how much longer they will keep showing up on Sunday morning. You see, my dear brothers and sisters, as followers and disciples of Christ, what we do every single moment of our life does matter. After all, we are the hands and feet of Jesus. Disciple is not only a Sunday morning thing, but an every moment, every day, 24-7, 365. In today's gospel story, we find that right after Peter and the disciples had claimed and affirmed Jesus as the Messiah, son of the living God, Jesus began to then reveal to them that he had to undergo great suffering and be killed and on the third day be raised. Well, as Matthew makes clear, that did not go over too well with Peter who objected. But after Jesus rebuked him, saying that 
get behind me, Satan, Jesus went on to share a few things of what it means to be a disciple and a follower of him. He says, if anyone want to become my follower, they must first deny themselves, take up their cross, and follow me. Brothers and sisters, as disciples of Christ, we are invited to take up our cross and to follow Jesus. But here's the thing. While the phrase, take up your cross and follow me, is commonly understood to mean acceptance of some burdensome task. The command to take up the cross is much more than a symbol of difficulties and sufferings experienced by us humanity. Alan Cole Pepper says this, the language of cross bearing had been corrupted by overuse. Bearing a cross has nothing to do with chronic illness, painful physical condition, or trying family relationship. It is instead what we do voluntarily as an acceptance of our commitment to Jesus. Now, my dear brothers and sisters, if what Cold Pepper is saying is true, then when we are invited to take our cross, it means then that we are to have our life shaped by our commitment to the crucified Messiah. And that is anywhere, anytime, and doing just about anything. And so whether we are at a stay home or we are a stay home mom, whether we are a babysitter or a nurse, carpenter, mechanic, secretary, school teacher, working in the grocery, first responders, musicians, wherever we are and whatever we may be doing, we, when we offer our time and our talent and treasure through our gifts, we are bearing our cross by allowing the whole of our lives to be shaped by our commitment to the Christ. You see what we do at home with our families, with our neighbors, at our workplace, at school and local communities in a world matters to God and does make a difference in the world. Indeed, God is at work in each of us and through each of us for the sake of the world God so loved. You and I as disciples are God's mouth and hands, feet and eyes, and whatever we do and whatever we say, we are representing God. So whether we are at church or wherever we are, we are called to live our baptism vows daily. And so as disciples, as disciples of Christ, my dear brothers and sisters, we are reminded that living out our baptismal vow is a daily call. As the Apostle Paul says, we can let love be genuine and hate what is evil we are called to hold fast to what is good, to love one another in mutual affection, outdo one another in showing honor. Do not lag in zeal, but ardent in spirit and serve the Lord. And know that it may not always be easy at times, for there may be times when we are faced with great suffering and pain. The good news is with Christ, we can do all things through him who give us the strength and who promises to be with us always. Indeed, we can rejoice in hope, be patient in suffering, and persevere in prayer, for our God is with us. Let us live and share the good news of Christ each and every moment as God so offer us the opportunity to be his representative in this world as we live our discipleship. True words indeed. Amen.
call each of us by our name in holy baptism you have marked us and seal us with a cross wherever promising to be with us through the holy spirit all the days of our life and now my dear brothers and sisters let us turn to our god as we confess our faith using the words of the apostles creed i believe in god the father almighty creator of heaven and earth I believe in Jesus Christ, God only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Confident of your care and helped by the Holy Spirit, we pray for the church, the world, and all who are in need. God of faithfulness, you bid your people to follow Jesus. Set the mind of your church on divine things. Grant us trust in you that we lose our lives for the sake of Christ and thereby discover joy in life through him. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of wonder, the earth is yours and all that is in it. Heal your creation and give us eyes to see the world as you do. As the seasons change, pattern the rhythm of our lives in harmony with all creation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer god of all nations you call us to live peaceably with all give us ears to hear one another even those we name as enemies fill all leaders with mercy and understanding that they advocate and genuinely care for those who are poor and most vulnerable in their communities lord in your mercy hear our prayer god of salvation you promise to deliver us Give those who suffer a strong sense of your presence and love. Accompany those who, uns who are uncertain. Raise the spirits of those who are despairing and heal the sick, especially Dee Grover, Christina Jackson, Doris Parfit, Ruth Schwartz, Lois Hirschberger, Winnie Ferguson, Patty Paul, Aaron Winter, Beth Connolly, Linda Bartelson, Lynn Lepo, Lois Gradell, Jean Lippincott, Danny Vile, Marty Danielson, David Erdman, Edith Williams, Elizabeth Rhinus, 
Linda Winter, Donald Robinson, Chris Ryan, Tim Cousy, Helen and Jim Susco, Lydia Cochran, Mary Ann White, Don Farnham, Dolores Danielson's California family, and all other families facing the wildfires, Joe Garcia, who is battling cancer, Mason Schradel, a seven-year-old boy who just had surgery for a brain tumor and is recuperating, Yusef K, who had emergency surgery on Thursday and is in critical condition, and Mr. Finn in Florida, who fell, had a large brain bleed, had surgery, and is also in critical condition, and Valerie Mahalik as she prepares to undergo a procedure, as well as all others that we name aloud or silently in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of community, you call us to rejoice in hope, be patient in suffering, and persevere in prayer. Make our congregation a workshop of your love. When we quarrel, bring reconciliation. Help us overcome evil with good. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Good and gracious God, we know that a hurricane that went by had caused tremendous damage to many. Lord, we ask for the days ahead that you will comfort them with your presence, give them the guidance, and restore wherever restoration needs to be. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Oh God, we know there is a wildfire out in California, so we pray that you will be with those who are serving to protect and to get that extinguished. We pray that you will keep them safe also from the danger of the fires. Keep the family also away from that danger. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Oh God of all grace, you give us everlasting life. In love, we recall your holy ones who now live in your undying light. In our remembering, give us a foretaste of the feast to come. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In the certain hope that nothing can separate us from your love, we offer all of these prayers to you, through Christ our Lord. Amen. And now the peace of the Lord be with you always, and also with you. Let us take a moment to share the Lord's peace with each other. Again, my dear brothers and sisters, I want to thank you for your continuing generosity. As you know, we continue to do ministries and your offerings, your gift of finance is truly appreciated. So thank you, thank you, thank you. May God bless you to continue to be a blessing. Salvation belongs to our God and to Christ the Lamb forever and ever. Great and wonderful are your deeds, O God of the universe. Just and true all your ways, O ruler of all the nations. Who can fail to honor you, Lord, and sing the glory of your name? Salvation belongs to our God. pray O God of justice and love we give thanks to you that you illumine our way through life with the words of your son give us the light we need awaken us to the needs of others and at the end bring all the world to your feast through Jesus Christ our Savior and Lord to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory forever amen Gather into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, 
hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Neither death nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. God the Creator, Jesus the Christ, and the Holy Spirit the Comforter, bless and keep you in eternal love. Amen. Worshiping with us. Please know your presence is very important to us. Just a few reminders if you wish to sponsor flowers, the fall flowers is part of the, um, geez, I'm having a brain, God's Work Our Hands Sunday. Um, the deadline is rapidly approaching to get your dedications in, so please look at your bulletin and send that into the church. This Tuesday night, once again, we're offering our meals to go from 5 30 to 6 p.m so if you're in need of a hot meal or you know someone who is please share the word and we are offering curbside delivery so pull up tell them how many meals that you need and it will be brought out to you remember to be smart be safe continue to wear your mask wash your hands and maintain social distancing go in peace christ is with you thanks be to god <laughs>